Good day, all you wonderful people. It's once again a wonderful privilege for me on Vayner to spend some time with your children, teachers, and parents about salt and light. I'm going to talk to you about salt and light again today. And previously, we spoke about righteousness. I just want to elaborate a little bit more on that today, and I really hope that it will help you to be salt and light of the earth. Let's just praise and worship God, and I'll talk to you a little bit later.
just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who plan and choose now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God, one day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who plan to choose him Dear friends, before we start, let's just ask God to help us to understand what righteousness means. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you teach us to live righteously. Thank you that according to your will and to your rules, we will be righteous and we will be grateful for what you've done for us as well. Thank you, Lord, that you teach us how to be ethical, principled and law-abiding. Please help us to understand today what righteousness means in Jesus name amen dear friends today we're talking again about children with character is salt and light of this earth and children with character who is salt and light is also righteous now previously we spoke about righteousness and I wonder if you can remember to live righteously means living right living according to God's will and his rules Jesus paid for righteousness and we are very grateful for that to be righteous means you are good, you are virtuous, you are sincere, proud, and decent. And we need to live morally right and justified, and also ethically principled and 
be law abiding. A righteous life has good consequences. And what does the Bible say about righteousness? Well, welcome to read with me in Proverbs 18 verse 10. Proverbs 18 verse 10 says the following. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. My friends, Noah was one of the people in the Bible that lived righteously. Even if it was not easy, let's have a look in the story of Noah, what it tells us about righteousness. God's story, Noah. So part of God's story is about Noah, and it begins like this. First, let's start at the beginning. God created the world to be the most perfect home, with mountains as playgrounds and oceans as swimming pools. Then God made people to be like Him and to live in it. And He wanted us to play with animals and explore jungles and be close to Him forever. It was perfect. But instead, people ran away from God. They hurt each other. They ruined the perfect home God had built for them. The Bible says this made God really, really sad. So sad, in fact, that God decided to wash away all the evil and meanness and cruelty in the world by sending a huge flood to destroy everything, to get rid of all the wrong things and the people who kept doing them. But there was one guy who followed God. That's right, Noah. God had a special rescue plan for Noah. He told Noah to build a big boat called an ark to stay in during the flood. It had to be big enough for Noah's wife and kids and at least two of every kind of animal on earth. So, pretty big. And Noah had to build it in the middle of dry land, which means his neighbors probably thought he was crazy, or at least a little weird. Kids, sometimes following God looks a little weird. We're okay with that. Anyway, looking weird didn't stop Noah. He knew he needed to be rescued. So he finished the ark and waited for God to bring the animals. And God brought them all right. Just imagine what those neighbors thought when they saw an entire zoo strolling through their yards. When Noah's family and all the animals were inside, God shut the door. Then the Bible says God opened the bottom of the ocean and the windows of the sky. We don't know what that means exactly, but we do know it was tons of water. It rained like this for 40 days and 40 nights. And the rain wasn't the worst of it. Once the water stopped, it didn't go away. Noah and his family sat cooped up, floating in the ark for over a year, just waiting. And waiting and waiting. Did we mention they waited? Well, when the tops of the mountains finally started to show, Noah sent out a dove to see if there was dry land. There wasn't. A week later, he sent the dove again. The water was going down. A week later, Noah sent out the dove one last time. It didn't come back, which meant it had found a home. Noah and his family could leave the ark. The very first thing Noah did was build an altar to worship God and thank him for his rescue. And God made a covenant with Noah, which is like a very special promise. God promised never to destroy the earth with a flood, even though he knew humans would keep right on doing wrong things that made him sad. God put a rainbow in the sky to remind Noah that he would definitely keep this promise. And just like God rescued Noah, he would one day send his own perfect son, Jesus, to earth. Jesus would take the punishment of all people. Then, God could be close to everyone who wants to follow him. And that's the story of Noah. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made a perfect home. People ruined it. God was sad. He planned a flood and a rescue. Noah built an ark. Animals came. It rained. Noah waited. Dry land appeared. Noah worshipped God. God made a promise. God sent Jesus to rescue us. And that's a part of God's story. That's the story of Noah. And in the Bible, there are many examples of righteous people. We heard about Daniel and Abram before, and in the videos we also saw Noah. For people, it was not easy to live righteously. They all lived under very difficult circumstances. But that did not deter them from living righteously. How will we manage to live righteously? If we look at how the people lived in the Bible, we have no excuses. 
we must also do our best to live and honor God with our lives, our thoughts, our relationships, our schoolwork, and everything we think, do, or say. Abram's life is a testimony of obedience and faith. If we're looking back at Abram's life, we will see that he also sinned. He was human, like you and me, so he was not perfect. The only man who never sinned was Jesus. However, Abraham did not sit in a corner and mourn. He kept on giving his best. So we have to be obedient to God because we are grateful. Obedience to God is the way we can live righteously because we are grateful for what Jesus did for us on the cross. How do we live righteously and in obedience to God? It's a process. It does not happen with the first breath after accepting Jesus in your life. You must learn to live righteously. You must de dedicate your life to Him. You must learn from Him. And you must spend time with Him. A very big task ahead of us. Our journey to a righteous and obedient life to God is not easy. To look, live and do like Jesus starts with one choice and then another one. It's a process and we work on it every day, one day at a time. We choose every day with the help of the Holy Spirit to make a righteous choice with every choice we make. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Every action starts with a thought. Therefore, every step of righteousness and obedience begins with a righteous and obedient thought. Before doing anything, think about it first. Stop, think, choose, do the right thing. A good way to practice is to think each time a thought comes to your mind. Stop, think about it, and choose, am I doing the right thing? What does the Bible say more about righteousness? 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 to 5 says the following, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for putting down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So we need to put a tick behind every thought. Before you finish with a thought, make sure that it is a thought that will make Jesus' heart very happy. If you can put a tick behind that question, then you can do it. Is it always going to be easy? No, unfortunately not. Abram, Noah, Sarah, Enoch, Daniel, and all the righteous people would have told you clearly if you asked them that question today. However, they did not give up. They held on to the belief that God would comply with the promises He gave them, even though they could not see it. They kept obeying, and when they made mistakes, they got up and tried again. It's like Abram's faith saved him. God promised him a great seed, that is many children and grandchildren. He was almost a hundred years old, and still he and Sarah had no children. But still Abram clung on to the promise of God that he would be the father of many nations. No disbelief and distrust made him doubt the promise of God. He was fully satisfied that it was possible for God to do what he promised. So we need to choose to learn from the Bible's faith heroes. Take it one day at a time, one step at a time, one thought at a time. Spend time with God in His Word and learn what His will is. The next step is to apply that knowledge to our everyday lives. As a result, we can look back after a time and see how God is shaping and transforming us so that we are becoming more and more like Jesus and more and more salt and light that are changing the world around us. And with that, we need to challenge each other. We need to keep each other accountable. If you're ready, you can tell your friend next to you quickly. My dear friend, I challenge you today. Remember, God is faithful and righteous. He keeps His promises. Start today with the process of justification through which Jesus is changing you. Start with one choice at a time and make the right decisions. Go and change the environment around you with righteousness. Go live it! Friends, children with character that is righteous, pray together. Let's just ask God to help us and assist us to have a righteous life. Let's pray. Father God, thank you very much for so many examples of righteous people in the Bible. Please help me to do my best to live and honor you 
with my life, my thoughts, my relationships, my schoolwork, and everything I think, do, and say. Thank you for always being there for me, especially in difficult circumstances. Please guide me through your spirit when I have difficult choices to make. Shape and change me so that I can become more and more salt and light, changing the world around me. In the name of Jesus, amen. My dear friends, salt and light and myself, we had a wonderful time with you today talking to you about salt and light and especially righteousness. So I bless you that you will have a righteous life and that you will change the world around you. Until the next time, we are going to close this song. I'm looking forward to see you again. Goodbye. Jesus, I've got Jesus. When life's a mystery and peace is what I need, I've got Jesus. I've got Jesus. Everybody, everywhere, come on, come on, let me hear you say, everything's okay, everything's alright. I've got Jesus in my life. Everything's okay, everything's alright. I've got Jesus in my life. So